She was very open and communicative. And I was reserved. Mr. Farid Ahmed. I had never imagined that one word is so powerful. Forgiveness. Forgiveness is the result of just common sense. If we just question ourselves, what is going to benefit me in future? Anger or forgiveness? I came to New Zealand when I was 26. In Nelson, I became financially stable, independent, and it was time to find a wife. My parents uh, wanted me to go to Bangladesh to get married, but going back was not uh, quite safe. In my mind, I was thinking of her uh, as uh, She was quite famous in her area. Why? Because she was a very good sports person. And despite losing mother when she was only eight months old, and her father around 11 or 12, she was resilient. And also, she was so infectious with her smile. You know, she had many marriage proposals, but nothing was clicking. And that was that could you tell them that instead of me coming to Bangladesh, would she or her family be willing to send her here? And I promise, the day she arrives, we'll get properly married. You know, he hesitated, but, but he went. And when he said, gave the proposal, her family was hesitating, but she came in and she said, I want to go. She felt that, you know, I would be the, you know, uh, best idiot for her. <laughs> <laughs> the strange thing was that we didn't feel any barriers between us. We blended just straight away. We were a happy couple. We felt that we were blessed uh, by one another. We were living in Nelson, and after four years, when life was blossoming, things were, you know, getting better. Uh, one day, then, 23rd of February, 1998, I woke up, washed myself, had my breakfast, and then I decided to walk, to cross the road, to get into the workplace. So I crossed one lane and then I was waiting in the middle. I was waiting, I remember, I was standing and then what happened, I do not know. I was hit, then I was thrown up and then I dropped on the windscreen and then I rolled and I was on the street and then the car just went over me. I remember waking up. I saw Husna was there. She was talking to a doctor. And the doctor was asking me, move your feet. And I, you know, I tried to move my feet. And he said, you know, oh no. I learned that I received spinal cord injury in T8 level, quite high. And as a result, my 
lower limbs were paralyzed and I could not walk again. And it was like a bomb on me. All my life I was playing, I was running. And suddenly when I hear that I was not able to walk again, disbelief, shock, disappointment in myself. Instead of improving, things started worsening and then they decided to send me to Christchurch with a small plane. In Christchurch, they gave me 7% chance to be alive. It was a big struggle for the first three months. So much pain, so much worry, mentally, emotionally, physically. I was crushed. In every level, I was crushed. I prayed a month to God to give me death. I was uh, in Barod Hospital over five months. Towards the fourth month, I was gaining more ability to heal myself. But I was, I was thinking about her. I wanted to give her best. But at the same time, I also wanted to give her choices. I used to love her so much that I could sacrifice anything for her. Now we, we played table tennis, and then I said, we need to talk. And she understood, she smiled, and she said, yeah, I need to talk to her. So we went to a room. I just simply explained to her that, look, if any way you feel that I'll be a burden, or you can have, you know, a better life. I will take whatever you decide. Whatever you decide. I'll give you the first chance. So she said, I didn't marry you to live. We'll face together. All that time, in every day, I used to have visitors. So Husna became very busy because she has to talk to them, inform them, and then, you know, do all the chatting with them. So in large Christ church community, you know, found out about Husna. And Husna got connected with them. And they said to her, please, when you go back to Nelson, pack everything, come back to us. You will be more useful here. Yes, she was much respected and loved, definitely. And whenever Husna went to the mosque, all the coordinators, they used to respect her so much. Oh, Husna has come. Now you tell us what to do. So we got married in 1994. I had my accident in 1998, and we had a daughter together in 2004. Shifa, yeah, very blessed with her, very much like her mother. I have now had the opportunity to be fully briefed with the details of the unprecedented events. It is clear that this can now only be described as a terrorist attack. So this is an Nur Mosque in Christchurch on Dins Avenue. And on um, 15th of March, when we arrive, this is exactly where we parked our car.
this is where we separated. I went straight and then Husna went the other way towards the back to go to the ladies' room. I was going to the main room. I used to pray there always. But right here, I saw a friend of mine who was very sick. So I wanted to meet him, greet him. So Imam started his sermon. I was going there, and then I listened the sound, ta 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 And I stopped here. People started running out. There were 30 people here, and also people from the main room. I saw they started running out as well. This door was jammed, that door was jammed. I was basically getting ready for my last moments because uh, I realized that I could not escape at all. The shooting was going on inside, but after a minute and a half so, I saw the door was empty. Then I decided to push myself out as gently as possible, having the thought that I would be shot on my head behind the back. The eyewitness said that Husna was last seen in that window. She was there, but I was somewhere he here. I could not see her. She could not see me because of the corner. After a few minutes, when shooting stopped, I decided to go in. Yeah, I knocked, knocked at the door a few times, and that's what I do usually. But that day, I knocked at the door and no one answered. You know, I just came in and I looked around and I did not see anyone here. And that gave me an instant relief. She was alive somewhere out there. I'm in the library room and uh, trying to go to the main room to see what happened there. What was going on inside you, Farid? Numbness with too much sadness. But I decided not to cry. My duty part in my mind woke up. As I go in, I see more and more bodies almost everywhere, lying on the floor. I saw dead bodies in front of me, on the left-hand side, and most dead bodies were on the right-hand side. Usually where I pray, In that corner, I could not uh, push my wheelchair in because there was a pile of dead bodies. On my right, I also could not go that way because there was a pile of dead bodies. Even dead bodies on sitting on that chair. I saw a father and son, little son, holding one another. And I was waiting here, asking people, asking police if anyone had seen Husna. I decided not to cry at that time. I wanted to be seen strong, to give hope to other people. But it was taking time, you know, getting late. Where was she? Then someone called me. He said, I saw you in TB 
waiting in the cold weather and you are waiting for husna but i want to give you the confirmation that i have seen her and i can see her now and i confirm that she is no longer alive and then he said i want you to go home and be prepared for the longest night she could have run away she didn't and and that thing i can never forget on one hand i feel sad that i had to lose her on the other hand i feel proud she was true in her commitment i came home with the biggest responsibility how to tell my daughter so she came and her first question was dad where is mom and i just said it i said she is with god then i said to her we need a meeting so we had a meeting in the kitchen and i said you are the leader today so you will advise me what to do she said i am only 15 i said doesn't matter you are the leader my first question what do we do from now we have two options broken down be miserable or be resilient and move forward which path should we take she said mustafa ali ahmed i don't want to have a heart that is boiling like a volcano that's why i have chosen peace i have chosen love and i have forgiven i have forgiven him no i don't have any grudge against him this is a letter from her majesty the queen's office king charles prince william receiving the international peace award in abu dhabi in the office of, of mr donald trump in, president trump yeah mr president <laughs> donald trump <laughs> I found that Shifa me we were in the same page exactly like Husna because after my accident that's what she told me she said you know poor bugger maybe he had a bad day she was smiling she said maybe he had a bad day but luckily you know you know you are still alive and that is enough for us Um, for a person to lose his wife and uh, to send this very important message it it actually set the scene for forgiveness and uh, peace and love and connectedness and uh, community in New Zealand it is a very uh, extraordinary message and uh, he's an extraordinary man as well we love him and he is an important person in our community and we are very pleased to have him as one of the leaders in in the mosque life uh, without her is not full i could be depressed i could take the path of depression because i miss her but i remember her in her memory is inspiring me to contribute 
Definitely I'm optimistic. Our life is still beautiful. The world is beautiful. The sun is shining. There are a lot of things to be grateful about, thankful about. So, you know, I'm, I'm very optimistic. Thank you.